Welcome back, Chumbas, to the Remastering Skyrim series, which focuses on a simple, short, yet highly effective mod lists to extremely improve all aspects of Skyrim, be it magic, combat, factions or DLCs. I have already covered off how to remaster the Dungard DLC, so make sure to check that video out in case you missed it. And now let's get started with remastering the Dragonborn DLC. Armors, weapons and artifacts come first. Armors of the Veloti is an absolutely incredible pack of currently 8 badass looking, low friendly Dunmer themed armor sets. Some of those you have seen in Morrowind, some in Tesso, some are inspired by other titles, but are all adjusted to look absolutely fitting their Morrowind Dunmer style. There are all kind of sets which will visually fit both warrior, rogue and a sorcerer character. Models are really detailed and they also support HDT physics mod. On top of that, mod also carefully distributes the sets to certain NPCs in Soulstame, like guards and some important named NPCs as well. But in case you want to keep them all just to yourself, you can install a different mod version. There is also one more simple but really nice looking and low friendly armor mod called Telvani Spell Sword Armor, which stands up for its name quite nicely. We also don't want to keep the original armors and weapons looking ugly, don't we? Frankly, HD Mirak and Ramiro's Chitin Armor HD mods make a glorious high quality retextures of Mirak's set as well as both light and heavy Chitin sets. while the Avrik High mod provides both improved model and texture for Mirak staff and sword, and what's even better, comes in a few versions to choose from up to your taste. When it comes to unique artifacts of Dragonborn DLC, there are plenty of them, and there is no better mod to greatly improve them than Reliquary of Myth, I already showcased this amazing mod several times on my channel, so you may want to watch a linked video for that, but it is still important to mention that Reliquary also covers most of Dragonborn artifacts, be it a Mirak set, which becomes truly unique and fabled masterpiece artifact, which it always should have been, or a Dragon Priest masks, which were nearly useless in Vanilla game but not anymore. With Reliquary of Myth, Dragonborn artifacts will become something truly worth to hunt for. Now let's improve the NPC's look. Pandorable NPC's Dragonborn overhauls 14 named NPC's so they will now actually stand out from the masses and, well, just stop being ugly and looking like a horror movie characters from a 2008 game. It refurbishes the appearance of both males and females, NPCs such as Ravenrock, Telmetrine, Skull Village and many other noticeable NPCs in this DLC. While most of popular large uh, all-in-one texture packs usually somewhat improve Soulstain general textures, they also miss a lot of smaller objects and architecture, clutter, etc. Here is where mods from Rayleigh Reactor and El Sopa come to the rescue, be it a harvestable plants or mushrooms, Rickling buildings or Dunmer urns, Natchez and Bristol bags, those mods will not forget about almost any of objects which will lack him attention of a bigger texture packs. Now let's improve one of the most notorious Skyrim problems two small and empty settlements, which was not improved by Bethesda in Dragonborn DLC anyhow. 
but gladly we have the mods. They allow you to greatly improve all the noticeable Dragonborn settlements, both exteriors and interiors, making them feel more alive, inhabited, and expanding them not with only more clutter, but with a brand new buildings and architecture objects, NPCs and even new places to trade with and steal from, Ravenrock, Talmetrine, Skull Village, as well as noticeable interiors like shops and inns, the Skull Great Hall, etc. will become drastically more pleasing to the eye and just to take your time in them. Those mods are Quaint Raven Rock, Better Tell Mitrine, JK Skull Village, Greater Skull Village, Distant Interiors and Enhanced Skull Great Hall. And the final graphics touch is to make the island of Soulstame itself more alive. Don't worry, the lore will not get hurt and we will not turn Soulstame in some sort of tropical paradise, no. Dark Forests of Skyrim Soulstame Apocalypse is a comprehensive overhaul for Soulstame featuring new types of flora, mushroom forest, ash desert and generally a bit more thicker forested areas, affecting every region of the island. I have also included a few before-after comparison shots, so you can see the actual difference yourself. It does not go over the top, yet makes the wilderness of Solstheim more diverse and less bold. The world exploration is probably the most important part of Skyrim gameplay, and we are going to bring in new layers here. Using the next mods, Soulstain will be expanded by a total of an 18 new dungeons, effectively doubling the vanilla game amount. The new dungeons can vary greatly, from being just a small cave up to a huge 6 level dungeon or a cave network, with a different difficulty level, availability or absence of puzzles, etc. And even new mini bosses in some of them, and of course with lots of new loot as a reward. Dungeons are added seamlessly into the game world and also support Radiant Quest system. The mods are Hamid's Dungeon Pack, Soulstain the Lost Levels and Soulstain Dungeon Pack. Hamid's mod also adds 26 other dungeons to the Skyrim itself, so it's just a must-have mod for dungeons and expansion to begin with. Now let's approach the Dragonborn magic and spells. Adept Magic of Ash mod is an immersive expansion to the Ash magic in the game, reworking some of vanilla and adding 7 brand new law-friendly spells which allows you to properly roleplay and just build your character around the Ash magic. First of all, you will go through a certain in-game process first to use the Ash spells. New spells belong to the Alteration School and while some of them inflict damage, they are mostly, as it logically should be, revolved around slowing down and paralyzing debuffs as well as some buffs to yourself. New spells are Ash Ward, Ash Gout, Ash Dampening, Ash Blast, Ash Skin, Ash Clock and the Ash Storm. Ash Ward, for instance, can throw away enemies which are power attacking you. Ash Gout inflicts moderate damage and slows enemies down while Ash Blast staggers enemies on top of the damage. Ash Dampening silences your footsteps, Ash Skin reflects back melee damage and Ash Storm inflicts a long-lasting damage and slows enemies down in a large area. All spells have own visuals and are also compatible with perk overhauls like Ordinator. It also adds a new armor set and variations of new unique Ash weapons. Now comes the Odin mod. While it overhauls Skyrim spells arsenal as whole and adds over a hundred of new spells, it also adds plenty of new Telvanni based and Morwind inspired spells which were lost somewhere in between every new Elder Scrolls game released. Magic in the series is being cut with every game, basically. For example, the Mysticism School existed in both Morrowind and Oblivion, but was completely erased in Skyrim. For instance, spells like Web, Infeeble, Force Bolt, Dazzling Flash, Dire Corrosion and some others. 
as for the vanilla spells, Odin makes the process of obtaining them a bit more immersive, so some of the powerful Telvani spells you can obtain only either through learning them from a certain magic expert or fighting a spell tom only in a certain location, and so on. What about a great follower and a quest mod at the same time, specifically for a Dragonborn DLC? Meet Teldrin Sirius, a lore-friendly, fully-voiced quest mod about the past of a well-known mercenary, Teldrin Sero, as well as his overhaul as a follower. Find Raven Rock under attack, investigate, explore, fight the new enemies alongside unexpected allies, follow the clues through the Soul Stem in Skyrim and earn unique rewards to uncover a dangerous conspiracy and shed some light on Teldrin Sero's past and change his future. Mod features over 500 new fully voiced lines, immersive new locations and dungeons, boss fights and of course weapons and a new armor set. The last mod in this list is not directly integrated within the Dragonborn DLC itself, but it has such a tremendous Morrowind vibes and made very well around it that it would be a crime to not include it here. Project AHO is a quest mod of a large DLC size itself, featuring a long, complex, non-linear storyline with a multiple endings, which takes place in a brand new Morrowind-inspired world space, with dozens of new places to visit, NPCs to talk and quests to solve, aside from the main questline. It has a custom, absolutely stunning level design and, depending on your playstyle, can give you couple dozens hours of walkthrough, leaving you completely amazed. One of the best Skyrim quest mods ever and highly recommended to install together with the rest of this list. You can watch a detailed review of it on my channel as well. Additionally, there are a few other mods which I consider optional recommendations as they either directly increase game difficulty or not actually located inside the DLC world space itself, but in my opinion are almost essential on top of Dragonborn DLC as well. Those are Revenge of the Enemies Overhaul, to improve enemies' variation and abilities, which covers Soul's theme in general, as well as the final boss fight, Dragon Combat Overhaul, to make dragon fights much more realistic and challenging, and lastly, Tell Nalta 2, hands down the best Telvanni inspired player castle, which you can build or, better to say, grow yourself. That's it. It was everything for today, folks, and I hope you found this mod list useful for your journey. You can find many other incredible mods in my modding guide, and if you are generally interested in a laconic news and reviews without politics and BS of indie games, TV series, hardware and software, make sure to check out Wires, a handwritten nerdy media written by myself, link down below in the video description. Don't forget to enable channel notifications and join our Discord to always keep in touch. Stay tuned, stay healthy and stay happy. Simitar Gaming here, signing out.